Okay, as I was saying, uh, the next sheet you're going to do, sheet A6, uh, doors and windows and finish schedules. In your book, chapter 9 is all about understanding schedules. You need to read that um, and make sure, uh, just for background knowledge, uh, and you can do it uh, the way they tell you or you can do it the way I tell you. It's just different styles. Um, but so uh, part of this assignment is to read chapter 9. Um, then if you look at my example drawings of St. Anthony's Architectural, on this sheet A2, you can see uh, the way I did my schedules. And I will, uh, I'll show you how to do these, but I'm just going to show them to you finished first. Um, over here on the right corner, we have the, uh, the door schedule which consists of the opening number or the mark number, which is the number that it put in your drawings, uh, like on the door. Uh, the door type, uh, which, you'll, which will refer to the door elevations down here. Door type legend, we have type one, two, three, and four. Uh, you have the opening width and height, uh, which would be your rough opening of three feet and either six, eight, or seven feet, depending on the door. Description of the door, is it solid core, meaning it's a solid door, it's not hollow. Uh, with glazing um, would mean it has a window in it. Uh, and the glazing type, in, my, in this case, was a type two glazing because it had to be fire rated. And I have a column for fire rating. You don't necessarily have to have that, 20 minutes. The thickness of the door was two inches. And a lot of this you can get from the information from your door that you chose. Um, the finish uh, was plastic laminate. The frame type was hollow metal. Uh, and then I have details, which you probably won't have this on yours, but um, so you don't have to include these columns. But I show where my head detail is, my jam detail, and my threshold detail. detail. Then I also had a hardware schedule. Um, meaning each door had a different type of hardware, which is your hinges, your locks, your uh, doorknobs, uh, depending on if the door was a secure door or not, it has different types. Um, again, you don't have to worry about that. So in this example door schedule, you really only need to worry about an opening or mark number, a type, the width, the height, a description, thickness, finish, and frame type. Um, and I'll show you how to, how to make this schedule. Then, like I said down here, the next thing on your to-do list is door elevations. And this is where you show your door types, if you have different types of doors. And so I've, I'll show you how to do this. It's a legend. Um, and you show, you know, you put in an elevation of the door. You put dimensions for the width and the height. Then over here on the next door type, uh, you also show which way it swings. Where the dotted lines come together is the hinge side. This is the side that opens. Uh, if there's windows or glazing, you dimension that, um, just like I did on these. So that's your door elevation or door legends, according to your assignment sheet. So you can combine this with the door frame elevations. Um, we don't, uh, that's just, that's all within this, okay? So don't do a separate door frame elevation. Um, then uh, we have the window schedule and elevations, which on my plans is over here. You have a window schedule, same thing again. You got your mark or your opening number, the width and the height, the type, the glass material, frame type, fire rating, and details. So you won't have these last four columns on yours. Uh, then, um, and I did mine a little bit different as far as my, my marks were based on the type of window. Uh, and you can do this or you can have each window numbered something else, something different. To me, and when I do this, I think it's easier because most of your windows are the same. So you have a window type one, two, three, and four, or, or in this case, five, six, seven, and eight. Um, and then you just put that mark, and I'll show you how to change yours on your drawings if you want. Um, and that becomes your window type. And then you, again, you just, it's a legend, you pull in the elevations and you dimension it accordingly. Uh, and then the room 
finish schedule is on a different sheet, I believe. Let's find that one. Must be at the beginning, of course. Let's see. <laughs> well, maybe I don't have a room finish schedule. Oh, no, it's right up here. I'm blind. Okay. <laughs> it is on the same sheet. So here, basically, it's your room numbers that, you, that your tags have. Um, and this will be created by the basis of your tags. Um, then you have a name. You have the floor finish. You have the base finish. The base is what's... Look at the bottom of the walls in this room. You see that rubber base? That's your base. Sometimes it's wood, sometimes it's rubber, whatever you want it to be. Uh, usually in a commercial building, they're rubber because it's easier to maintain. And that's also called resilient or rubber. Uh, your walls are made of gypsum. In this case, they were gypsum wallboard painted. That's what that's short for. GWB PTP. PTD is gypsum wallboard painted. You do all four walls in case they're different. So you got your north, south, east, west wall, your finish ceiling. Um, most of you have acoustical ceiling tile, which is the lay-in grid system. Some of you have gypsum wallboard. Uh, so you'll put, depending on what room it's in, uh, GWB or ACT. Then you'll uh, put your height. And you can't, I put the area of the rooms, you don't have to do that necessarily. So that's kind of what your room schedule looks like. So how do you make all this? Let's go to to Revit, and we'll start making it. Um, let's see. Uh, first, you, you're going to create these things and drag them on the sheets as usual. So, for your uh, the door schedule, um, you're going to make a schedule, which is right here. So you hit uh, in the project browser. Under Schedule Quantities, right-click, New Schedule, and it's going to be, I don't need all these others, I'm going to take those off um, so I don't see them. It's going to be Doors right here, so you pick that type, it's New Construction, uh, I think that's all we need for now. Okay, so here's where you choose your columns. Um, so, and this, you, you might have to go back and forth to look at what's actually listed on your door. Um, but let's just start for now. Um, the first thing was the, the mark. So you're going to add the mark. And you can shift the order of these later. Uh, you're going to add the type or type comments or type, I mean, I have to, I always have to go back and see what they're actually used. In fact, let's cancel this and go back and look at it for a second. Um, so most of my doors are in my floor plan. Uh, I don't have, any, oh, there's one. I don't have very many doors. So that door is a single flush uh, at 36 by 84. If I edit the type, When you edit the type, you change all the doors that are just like this in the whole project. So the type mark is number two. You can add a fire rating. Um, you can add, uh, you can change different things. You can have the uh, width and the height. Um, if they're different, you can change the door frame material if you want, uh, et cetera. Then over here, so that's a type 2 door. Over here, the mark. See, it labeled it number 5. Now, so when you put doors and windows in, it usually does it in a sequence. If you don't like the sequence it chose, um, now this put my, my doors all of the same type, which I like to do it that way. You don't have to do it that way. Some people do it by room numbers. I do it by door types. So this is door type 5, so that's what it's called, <laughs> mark number 5. But see, it's actually my first door, so I can go in and just change that if I want to rename it to door number 1. Um, and that's okay, because there's some other, something else in here that has that same number. But it's probably an old drawing. 
this one I can change it as well if I want to so it's up to you how you number number them okay um, so you got your mark your head height here you can over here too you can do your finish would be uh, you could type something in like plastic laminate which is what most commercial doors are frame material you could put uh, hollow metal uh, frame type I don't think we have that on our schedule but you, you fill in these the holes over here and sometimes you have to go back and forth like I said so now let's see if this one did the same thing okay it didn't fill that in for me maybe these doors aren't the same I thought they were another thing let me show you a secret um, well it's not really a secret but like if I want this door to be just like that door I can go to modify uh, match type so that's that little paintbrush thing and then you put the one the one that has everything you like there and then you and you hit that one I believe that's right no that didn't work did it sometimes that works Maybe, maybe hit that, and then you go like that. No. Sorry, I'm, I'm more probably confusing you. Forget that little secret I just told you. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it doesn't work on doors. Um, but here, I think you, I thought, let me see, door material. Uh, door panel, door frame. No, okay, that's not where you do that. Let's just see what happens when we make our schedule. So now we're going to go to the schedule. Again, right click, new schedule, uh, doors, new construction, okay. So we're going to put in, let's just go down this list. Uh, we might want comments. Sometimes you want that. Uh, description, we want that. Uh, finish, we want that. Frame material, we want that. Frame type, we want that. Um, I don't know why that's popping up. Uh, We want the height, the mark, the, the width. We do type, no, type. It may be type mark is what we use. I'm going to put them both in, then I can remove one. So then if you don't like where these are, like you, you think you want mark first, you move that up like this and you just get them in the comments is usually at the end you put that down at the bottom by clicking that uh, width would probably be above height but those will probably be um, right there width height finish frame material frame type we're gonna see what these are because I'm not sure and we're gonna hit OK Okay, so it kind of filled all that in for us. Um, and then you can adjust the widths of your columns here. if you Like that. It's got your width and your height. Um, so you'll probably have to type in this information. It did do my, my type mark is the elevation. Um, type is a 36 by 84. You can change these names too, I believe. Um, and then comments is just any general remarks you want to make about that door. What happened to your screen? Okay. <laughs> it went black. <laughs> okay. 
So, uh, like door number five is a, I can say an entry door, or whatever you want to call it, or an exit door. Uh, this change will be applied to all elements of the single flex. That's fine. So, so I made that on all of those. The width, the height is right, the finish. Plastic laminate. Now, I'm not saying that's the finish on all your doors, but uh, like your ex exterior doors will probably be steel. Your interior doors will be plastic laminate. And then once you type it once, it'll let you copy it down to all the ones by hitting this little thing. Frame material. I've already got a hollow metal there, so I can just click that. All my, mo most door frames are hollow metal. Uh, so we don't need this frame type. We don't need this type because we're already over, we already got that information there. We do need the type mark. So now I can go back in here under fields over here, edit, and I can uh, remove type mark. I can remove type uh, and frame type. Hit OK. So now it's looking more like what I want it to look like. And then, so you just build it the way you want it to look. And then if you have comments, uh, you can write them there. And then once you get that door schedule, uh, so you're going to have a new sheet called. Uh, hmm. Right click, new sheet, 22 by 34, okay, um, down, I'm going to rename it, right click, rename, this is sheet A, capital A, 6.00, and then that's a long name, door, windows, finish schedules and elevations, so I'm going to just shorten that to say schedules and elevations that covers it now I can pull that uh, door schedule in there and you can put it wherever you want and you can adjust it what I want to show you see those little blue triangles you can uh, you can adjust how how wide these are if things are getting jumbled up so you can make your comment thing longer uh, you know this these don't have to be quite as wide, taking up too much room. So you just pull this back and forth. Uh, mark, you might want that to be wider. I don't know really why this gap is here, so let's go in back to the door schedule. And let's see. Uh, fields, formatting, appearance might work. So you can... You have your grid lines as thin lines. I do want an outline. I want my outline to be a wide line. Uh, I do not, that, that blank space is a blank row before the data, so I'm going to uncheck that. I don't like that, but you can have it if you like. I want to show the title. I want to show the headers. Um, I'm not sure why A, B, C, D is on there. Uh, Text schedule, default, header text, body text, formatting. Um, so you can just play with all these and see what. You can also sort by mark number. That way it'll be in order. Um, see, it changed it. Uh, the other thing I can do is, uh, not sure why. I don't like these A, B, C, D's on there. I'm not sure why that's there. Um, usually you can hide columns. Like if you have a column you need the information but you don't want it in your schedule, like I need comments but I don't want it there, I can hide it. And then you can unhide it. Um, so that's just up to you. But let's see again. Um, appearance. Show title, show headers. Let's see what that does. I didn't want to do that. I'll have to figure out how to take these A, Bs, and C, Ds off. I'm not sure. But that's, uh, so you can see what it, well, it didn't show that in this drawing, so that's fine. I just, that's what I care about. And then you can, you can center your text however you want to do it. 
So there's your door schedule. Um, then to make your door elevations, you're going to do a, a legend. So you go to your legends, right click, new legend. We're going to call it a uh, door legend. Oops. You pick a scale, probably one quarter inch will be fine. Um, and you've got a blank sheet there. And then you get your doors that you've the different doors you've used, you go down here in your project browser to the doors, and you find, uh, I've only used a single flush, you find the width you've used, 36 by 80, you bring it in, now it'll bring it in automatically in a floor plan view, but right up here you can change that to an elevation, to the front or back. So there you, one, and once you get the first one in, uh, then you can draw a, line, a detail line, annotate, detail line. I'd use a wide line since it's on the bottom. And I'm just going to make kind of like a floor line to set all my doors on, just because I like the way that looks. Make that go there. And then if I had another type, I didn't use this type, but I'll just show you. If it'll let me. Maybe it won't. Maybe because I didn't use it. But whatever types of doors you use, I'll just use a different size. You bring those in. Each time you'll probably have to do this. See, that one's skinnier. And set it on that line. Then you'll, uh, you'll label them by type 1, however you type mark them, 1, 2, 3, 4, A, B, C, D. You'll dimension them just like normal. You'll go from there to the top of the door. Um, you can do the frame if you want. You'll do the width. And there you have it. And you put any unusual notes. And if you've, put, if you've got doors with windows in them, they should automatically pop up. So that, so you got your door uh, legend. So you would go back to your sheet. Uh, and you probably, after you get all that populated on there, find your legends. Here's your door legend. Bring it in there. Okay? And you'll arrange this neater than I'm doing it. Um, so that's door elevations and door frame elevations. Window schedule, window elevations uh, is pretty much the same. You'll do a schedule. Right click, new schedule. Go down to windows right there. Um, hit OK. You decide what you want in there. Um, probably you want comments, add, uh, des description, add. Um, mark, add. I mean, you can put any of this you want in there. You know you want width, add. You want the height, add. What else did I say needed to be in there? Type. I'll put all of these in there because I don't, we'll have to see what uh, components they show. And then you can, uh, again, mark is usually first. I'm going to move that up. Description, I'm going to move that up. Then I'm going to do my width and height. Uh, let's see what this looks like. So it's the same, kind of the same thing as before. Uh, type mark, got all type B windows. Uh, description is what you make of it. It'll be called a double hung or a single hung or sliding. We'll put sliding if it's a sliding window. And then all those windows that are that you put in the drawing of that type are going to turn into sliding windows. Um, probably don't need this one, uh, so I'm going to go back to the window schedule. Oh, I'm already there. Uh, what was I going to do? Fields. I want to take out type comment. 
remove. I'm going to move comments down to the end. Now, then you can adjust the, these, and uh, again, you can format or appearance. You can uh, outline it with a wide line. I don't want the blank row. Uh, sorting by mark. Um, and if you wanted to sort by another factor, you could. So there's that. Then I go to my sheet, and I pull in my window schedule. Just, you know, it's, notice that blue line that was there a second ago? That lets you align things, which makes your drawings look nice and neat. That's a good idea. Then I can go in and address the, the widths of these columns so that all my writing's on one line and not messed up. Oh, we probably don't need type either because we have the width and the height. So I'll go back over here. Um, fields. Take out that type. So now it took it out of there. Now the window uh, elevations is going to be the same. Remember over here, I have my window elevations on my sample plan, just, just like the door. So you're going to go, you're going to make a legend, new legend, uh, window, what did I call the other one? Door legend, this will be window legend. Uh, quarter inch. Probably is a good place to start. Then again, you just pull in the type. You go down your project browser. You have to pull them from the project browser, and you find your windows. Uh, looks like there's two types in the drawing. You know, you got you only choose which ones you've put in. I'm not sure what I put in, but I'm just going to pull some out here. Okay, again, it's going to show you the floor plan view. You're going to change that to an elevation right there. And then I'm going to pull another type in, change it to elevation. And you probably, usually all your windows, unless you've got a reason for designing them that way, the tops will be, will align. Um, and then you're going to draw an, a detail line for the floor, and you'll have to, uh, like if you want the bottom of your window three feet from the floor, you'll need to move that line accordingly. But you want it to be to scale, so I'm going to say, I'm going to just dimension this to the bottom of my window to there, and it's not three feet. So I can highlight the line, then I can change that to three feet, and it'll move the line. So you dimension these just like the door, um, every, you know, everything you need, to, and you label them according to their, their type. Then again, you just drag it into the uh, drawing, window legend, where's that? After you get it done, and you put it where you want it, and it'll have all of those. So we've got door schedule, door elevations, uh, door uh, window, schedule window elevations. Now the room finish schedule. The easiest way to do the room finish schedule uh, let's see, is to go to your floor plan and highlight your room. So here's that one. Then go over here and you got your room number. You can change the number if you like. You got to name the room. This is going to be, if it's, yours should already be named, but I'll call this lobby. Then you're going to have comments, occupancy depart department, you can fill all that in if you want. The base finish, I'm going to say uh, vinyl, V-I-N-Y-L. Ceiling finish was A-C-T. Wall finish was gypsum wall board painted. Uh, floor finish, I'm going to use vinyl tile, V-I-N-Y-L, T-I-L-E. Um, okay, it didn't ask me all the north, east, south, west walls. So I think I have to, how do I add those? Let's just apply that. Um, let's see. 
think I had to add that component in there on my other drawing. If you just want to leave it at wall finish, if all your walls are the same, then you can just have, have one column. But usually we do have north, east, south, west. Let me just think how I did that. Um, trying to, it's not letting me edit the type. Maybe I can add it. Right. Let's go to the, the room schedule. Another, t before I go to do that though, like if, if your lobby is going to be the same as, or all your doctor's offices are going to be the same, an easy way to do this is to like click all the doctor's offices at one time, then just type it in once and it'll all populate. You understand what I'm saying? So if my doctor's office and my lobby are all going to be the same, uh, then you can type the base is, uh, what did I say before, vinyl, ceiling finish, ACT, wall finish, gypsum wall board, floor finish. Of course, your offices might be carpet, but, but if, all, if you know every part of your room is going to be the same for, for like your two doctor's offices, do that. You can highlight them both and type them at once. Um, Okay, so then you go to your schedules. Uh, so we're going to have to make a new schedule. Uh, rooms. New construction, okay. So here's, you now you got to choose all the things. So you got your number, add, your... Uh, what? Uh, the name is what I was looking for. <laughs> Trying to do it in order this time. Name, uh, wall finish, add, ceiling finish, add, uh, floor finish, add, uh, base finish, add. If you want to add your area, you can. Um, comments. Maybe this is where I had the northeast, southwest. So so what I did here, let's see if that works, if you want to do that. So I'm going to add a parameter. Project parameter can be shared multiple, uh, can appear in schedules but not in tags. Can be shared by multiple projects and families, is forwarded, blah, blah, blah. Um, let's, let's, okay. let's say uh, north wall discipline would be common, type of parameter, text, group, text. Okay. Add parameter, south wall. Wait. Discipline common, type of parameter, text, group parameter under say text. Let's see if that shows up so that we can uh, populate that. Okay, it showed up over here and I'm going to go back to my floor plan, look at the room. Okay, now see it's under text. So now if I want to add those parameters, I can say the north wall is gypsum wall board painted and I want the south wall, like if you're in a bathroom or something, the south wall can be tile, something like that. So hit apply. Um, now I'll go back to my schedule. Uh, see how that happened? Now I would rearrange this so that it looks normal, but that's how you add the additional parameters if you want. So just the same with the other, then you're going to go back to your sheet and you're going to drag it in there once you get it all finished up. Uh, that's a schedule. Put that in there. This will probably be the bigger bigger schedule once you get it done. And again, you format it just, just like the others. Uh, and I think that's 
pretty much it. Is there any questions? It's pretty simple. You just got to go back and forth and play with it, get it looking right. Okay? Any questions? Speak now, forever hold your peace. <laughs> okay, get to work then.